In this video, we're going to talk about some misconceptions regarding breathing. Now, I'm not talking breathing for respiration like we do you know, uh, 20, 30,000 times a day to get oxygen in our blood. We all know how to do that if you're watching this video because you're alive. I'm talking about breathing for stability because there's a misconception regarding how to breathe for stability, the difference between belly breathing versus diaphrag diaphragmatic breathing versus inhaling through your nose, out through your mouth, and all sorts other stuff. So we're gonna clear that up and specifically talk about how to breathe for stability to maximize your intra-abdominal pressure. Reach. Hey, what's up, y'all? I'm Dr. RJ Burr of Reach Rehab and Chiropractic Performance Center. We're a small clinic in Plymouth, Michigan, near, near the Detroit area, but we make online videos or health and fitness videos to help you feel and perform at your best. Now, if you're new to this channel, please subscribe, hit the bell for further updates, and also uh, make sure to leave a comment and let us know what kind of content you want to see because we do make content based on customer or viewer comments. Now this video we're making specifically because of a comment we got on previous core and breathing vi uh, videos. Now we do focus a lot on core and breathing in a lot of our videos. We think it's very important and it's important to do it the right way. So that's why we're making this video, video to clear up some misconceptions. All right, so first thing is that the uh, strength versus stability, okay? So we all talk about core, improving our core, and a lot of people say, I want you a stronger core. Well, that's true, but you actually need stability first. So let's define this. So what is stability? Stability is your ability to control change, right? So it's my ability to take something like a weight here and then be able to not just fall over. I can stay centered here. Now, strength is my ability to resist strain. So that's more or less my capacity of how long I can hold this here. So I need stability first just to do this, right? If this weight is too heavy, I might not have enough stability to do that but then how long I can do this with quality, that's strength, right? So, so if you think about it that way, you actually need stability first, then you can build strength on top of that. So when we talk about creating intra-abdominal pressure, that is stability first, then we can strengthen it with a lot of compound movements like deadlifts and squats and lunges and yada yada, so on and so forth, right? So in the fitness world and health world, it's not really controversial to say that intra-abdominal pressure is how the core works because really when you brace your core or squeeze or activate or tighten your abs, we all know that that's helpful. Well, why? Because that creates intra-abdominal pressure. So when you create pressure in your belly, what does that do? That stabilizes your spine and your pelvis, those, your bones inside, and that creates an anchor point for your muscles of your legs and your arms to pull from. That's human function in a nutshell. And I'll actually put a little picture of that right here, a little weightlifting dude to show that. Um, actually not weightlifting dude, it's gonna be the little guy with uh, the red uh, abdominals and then blue muscles and it shows the mover muscles versus the uh, postural muscles. We'll stick it right over here, all right? So this is the anchor. Our muscles of our arms and legs pull from that anchor. Now, here's the misconception is how do we maximize intra-abdominal pressure? Now, we can create intra-abdominal pressure by <clears throat> squeezing down, burying down, sucking the abs in, doing that. But what we actually find is that sucking or squeezing in alone minimizes your capacity to stabilize, meaning that you put a cap on it. You can actually maximize it by expanding. Now, this goes into the next, the next thing. There's a misconception between belly breathing versus uh, diaphragmatic breathing, and some of it's semantics. Now, why am I talking about breathing? Because breathing is actually how you activate your core. So outside of getting blood or oxygen in your blood through respiration of breathing, we can use breathing secondarily to create intra-abdominal pressure. And what's actually kind of cool and nerdy science, even you think about it, is that when you lift something heavy, right, you can pretend this is really heavy here. We can breathe, brace, and hold your breath. So you can forego breathing for respiration to really focus on the stability standpoint. Because otherwise, if you're lifting really heavy weight, it's really hard to stabilize and breathe for respiration at the same time. So it's kind of a cool function that we can control it in that way. So Let's go into belly breathing versus diaphragmatic breathing. So we talk about belly breathing and belly breathing just really means just breathing your belly. And that can be used for lots of reasons. That can be used for uh, reducing your vagal tone, decreasing stress, 
or uh, being able to get off, out of fight or flight into rest and digest, more parasympathetic versus sympathetic, a lot of terms thrown out there, right? Because we, when we breathe down into our abdomen, nice and easy versus our chest, this can help us decrease stress and um, can be helpful for us to uh, kind of regulate, right? But what we're focusing on here is not Warren G and Nate Dogg, we're for focusing on here, <laughs> like that regulate joke. And Warren G was on the streets, trying to consume some Yep, yep okay, all right, good. I don't know if anyone catch it, but I just gave it away. Is that uh, we're gonna be focusing not on your stress state, we're gonna be focusing, or your nervous system state, we're gonna be focusing more on stability, all right? So a lot of people, we talk about when we wanna, when we breathe and brace, we need to fill up the belly, and bear down and brace, that is important. But we have to be mindful of how we're doing it, okay? So this is where one of the misconceptions or a question came up is that belly breathing is not the best way to brace and, and, and lift. Yes, because if you're breathing just with your belly, you don't maximize intra-abdominal pressure. When you breathe diaphragmatically, meaning that you use your diaphragm to fill up your abdomen in the front, in the back, into the pelvic floor, and into the lower ribs, and then throw a brace on top of that, that's when we maximize our intra-abdominal pressure, okay? So let's go into that. So anatomy-wise, think of my abdomen as a pop can. I have the, the top of the pop can or soda can here, depending on what region of America you're from. And then you have the bottom of the pop can, the pelvic floor, and then you have the wall of the pop can around here, which is our abs, obliques, transverse abdominis, back, back muscles. It's a combination of all these muscles creating that pop can. Now think of a pop can when it's filled with pressure, right? Rigid, okay? But when you crack the top and let that pressure go, you can crush it. So what we're trying to do is inflate, pressurize that pop can with our breath, and then on top of that, we can bear down and brace, which stiffens the wall of that pop can, increasing pressure even more. And that's, I'm not gonna go into this on, on here, but that's how a weightlifting belt works because when you have a weightlifting belt on, that creates even more pressure you push against and that thickens your pop can wall, so to say, okay? All right, so that's the anatomy. When we breathe, when we, when we breathe in, our diaphragm should drop down here. And when it drops down, our belly expands, our pelvic floor should expand, and our, the back of our uh, back should expand our, our posterior abdominal wall through here on either side of the spine. We should get 360 degrees of expansion and below, but it's easier said than done. So ideally when we diaphragmatically breathe, not belly breathe, we're getting everything to create pressure. And so when your diaphragm drops, that it creates space or negative pressure in your lungs where you can get air in your lungs, right? So when that diaphragm drops down, but you also se sequentially create pressure in your abdomen. So the misconception is that when your diaphragm contracts and you breathe in, is that it goes up, it doesn't. It drops down to create space for the air in your lungs. But you can, yes, breathe up into your chest, it's possible. But the problem with that, it's a very stressful pattern, but it completely, neg not negates, but minimizes your ability to create pressure here. Okay, so first step is one, we have to be able to belly breathe, we do. We have to be able to separate this versus this, which we have a video on, and we'll uh, put that in here. Um, for further concepts on the, uh, the, the anatomy and the science of creating this pressure in the pop can, again, we can put that um, uh, video, is it up here or is it up here? That way. On this side? Yep. We'll put that one up here now so you can look more into the science of it. So speaking of the science of it, rather than just trusting me that, hey, when you breathe here it works, Let's just look at it from a uh, objective standpoint. So we have a tool using a core 360 belt and a pressure sensor where we can see this in real time so that way we know how we're maximizing our intra-abdominal pressure. All right, here we are. I got the core 360 belt on. All this is, is not a weightlifting belt. It's a cueing belt or a uh, awareness belt, I should say. So it is fabric with two uh, half domes or half globes, spheres, half spheres. Spheres, there you go. Half spheres in the front and two half spheres in the back. All this does, it's a tactile cue. What does that mean? It helps me feel that I'm expanding into the belt. So this alone is great because you can feel when you breathe into the belt where you're breathing into. And you can feel if you're just belly breathing here in the front versus totally diaphragmatic breathing 360 degrees through the entire belt, right? It's an important piece there. And you can feel that because you can breathe just through the belly and not in the back, which I'm gonna show you now by using our pressure sensor, which I'm gonna throw right here on my right-hand side, the left side of the screen, so you can see this in real time. It's recording on the iPad right now. All right, so I'm looking at the graph right now. 
And as you can see here, as I'm talking, you can see a little bit of ups and downs going on. So I'm gonna go ahead and suck in my abs and you're gonna see that um, the graph drop, ready? Right, why is that? Because there's less pressure against the pressure sensor. Now where's this pressure sensor? I think it's on my right hand side. So see how I'm, I'm hitting it right now? You see it wobbling? That is directly sensing how much pressure my abdominal wall is making, okay? All right, so now, let's get reset here. What I'm gonna do first, I'm gonna squeeze my abs to show you when you squeeze your abs, you do quick create pressure, ready? and relax. I'm gonna squeeze uh, and relax, okay? So I'm creating pressure there. You can see it's dropping down a little bit. I'm losing it. Next, I'm gonna breathe up into, or breathe into my belly. I'm gonna belly breathe, ready? Right, so you create, see some pressure increase there, okay? Next, I'm gonna chest breathe so you can see what that looks like, ready? Why is that drop happening? Because I'm sucking in here in order to raise my chest up. So I'll turn this way so you can see it too. So I'm gonna first belly breathe. Chest breathe. Now I'm gonna diaphragmatically breathe. I'm gonna fill out this belt 360 degrees. Watch this, ready? What do you see there? Hell of a lot more intra-abdominal pressure, right? So ready? Here's belly breathe, just the front. Lift the arms up when you do it. Ready? My belly's moving, a little pressure back there, but ready? That is my back expanding. Huge difference regarding, not just semantics, but belly breathing versus 360 degree diaphragmatic breathing, completely different regarding spinal stability. Why is that? Because you have to fill out 360 degrees to create maximal intra-abdominal pressure. The more intra-abdominal pressure you have, the more stability you have in your center here, which means this is a stronger anchor point for your arms and legs to pull from. What does that mean? That means more power, less risk of injury. And this is a special sauce when it comes to lifting or any athletic activities, okay? So now let's take this graph to the next level. So now that you saw the difference there, now we're gonna add the brace to it. So when we can fully diaphragmatically breathe and brace, that's when we get ultra, mega, super, intra-abdominal pressure, which that's what you wanna use for specifically heavy lifting. Now we're not gonna go into heavy lifting to this video. If this is enough of a hit where we get some comments that say you like this, you wanna know more, we'll do a full video on that. For this purpose, I'm just showing you how I can maximize my intra-abdominal pressure, which I use for all my uh, lifting activities. All right, so we're gonna go back to the graph here. Okay, still working, okay. All right, ready? So I'm gonna first do my belly breath. Right, next is gonna be my diaphragmatic breath. And then next is gonna be my uh, breath embrace, ready? Good, and notice that I could hold it there quite a bit, okay? So, how does this apply to lifting? Well, when you do heavy lifts and you hold your breath, you want to maintain that as much as possible through your lift because if you don't, you're going to reduce power and increase your risk for injury. Ready? So what is this going to look like? I'm going to, I'm going to do a squat. What you're going to see as I squat down, it will jump up even more. But what I'm looking for is that the breath that I start with is the same level of breath I end with. Okay? So here it goes. I'm going to breathe, brace, squat, and then let it go. Here we go. Good, I'm gonna stop this here. I'm gonna create a line. And what you're gonna see is I started my breath and brace. Come on, is this working? All right, I'm not getting a line, so I'm gonna make a line on the video. I get a breath and brace and hold. You can see some of the fluttering with my squat. And then as I let go, it's a little bit lower than where I started. So I lost some pressure. But ideally what we can do is use this as a way to measure are we able not only to create this pressure, but can we maintain it through a lift, all right? So what do we learn from this? Ultimately, there's some misconceptions. Intra-abdominal pressure, we don't have to argue, that's super important for core stability. What is stability? Your ability to control change. You have to have that first before you stack on strength on top of that. What is strength? Your ability to resist a load or, 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 or strain. Okay, so once you have that, so how do, how do you maximize your stability since you need that first? Well, not just belly breath. You do need a belly breath as a prerequisite because if you just know, only know how to chest breathe, 
that's a problem because you're not going to be able to maximize your core. So you got to belly breathe first. But once you learn how to belly breathe, then you learn how to diaphragmatically breathe 360 degrees because once you have that, now you've got the special sauce because once you breathe diaphragmatically, then brace and you're able to maintain that, that's when you maximize your intra-abdominal pressure. You learn how to maintain that intra-abdominal pressure through a lift. Now you can start stacking major strength on top of that where you will see the gains in strength and performance without the injury woes. All right, we've got plenty of videos on this stuff, but if you really want to learn step-by-step, step, put all together for you, uh, how to take your belly breathing to diaphragmatic breathing, to then applying that specifically to lifting activities, to sports, to re uh, reducing risk of injury and performance, we have this custom built for you in a core online core strength and stability program. We'll put a little link in the, uh, uh, what's it called, the comment description? description there you go. In the description for you and leave you a nice little discount code there for you for being a YouTube subscriber um, where you can maximize your core and know that you're doing it the right way.